everybody, and welcome back to the St. Paul Center's weekday reflections on the daily Mass readings. My name is Curtis Mitch, and today is a beautiful Monday, March 1st, and today's Gospel reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verses 36 through 38. Now, this reading is only three verses long. It's very short and sweet, but because it's the teaching of Jesus, it weighs heavy with meaning. There's always a lot here to challenge us as disciples of Jesus Christ. Now, what is Jesus doing in today's reading? He's preaching the Sermon on the Plain, which is sort of like Luke's version of the Sermon on the Mount that you read about in the Gospel of Matthew. And in the midst of this sermon, Jesus is giving us some of the do's and don'ts of Christian discipleships, some of the virtues that he wants us to cultivate, some of the vices that he wants us to avoid. He wants us to inculcate a life of generosity and mercy, compassion towards other people and a willingness to forgive them on the one hand, but he also wants us to avoid judging them harshly. He wants us to avoid condemning our neighbor and pouncing on them for every sin and every wrongdoing. In a sense, what Jesus is saying is that because we are children of God, we're supposed to grow up as children of God to mature so that children become like their Father in heaven. Right? That's the underlying principle of today's reading. So let's look at the passage and then begin to parse out a little bit of its meaning for you and I. This is Luke chapter 6, beginning in verse 36. Jesus said to his disciples, Be merciful. Even as your Father is merciful, judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, it will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. Now, there are a couple of things that I think Jesus is drawing our attention to, and I just want to focus on three here in today's little reflection. The first is this imperative to be merciful as your Father in heaven is merciful. What does that mean? Well, Jesus is actually developing at this point an Old Testament teaching. If you go back to the book of Leviticus in the Old Testament, that's the third book of the Old Testament. In Leviticus, you have this this call on the part of God to the people of Israel who are assembled at the base of Mount Sinai. And God says to them, be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. So Leviticus offers this summons to holiness. We imitate the Lord God by being holy as he is holy. Now, fast forward here to Luke in the New Testament, and Jesus is saying we need to do the same thing, only we're imitating God's mercifulness. Be merciful as God is merciful. And I think it's important to understand at this point that these two things are not in competition. It's not as though holiness was an Old Testament thing and mercy is a New Testament thing. Rather, Jesus is showing us the full depths of what holiness actually means. In Leviticus, you have certain rudimentary, basic lessons on what it means to be holy, to avoid things that are impure, things that are unclean. All right, But in the New Testament, Jesus is saying that the full depths of holiness means that we imitate God in the way that he treats others with mercy, the way that he forgives other people. So Jesus is deepening our understanding of holiness in terms of divine mercy, that we're to show that to others as God has shown it to us. And it's based on the same principle, though, isn't it? Uh, you can see how, how the passage in Leviticus and the passage in Luke are formulated in almost the same way. And it's based on the principle of imitation because you and I are made in the image and likeness of God according to the book of Genesis. And what we need to realize and what Jesus is reminding us of here today is that the image and likeness of God is not just a fact, it's a responsibility. It is our call as God's people to imitate him in the ways of holiness and now ultimately in the ways of mercy. So that's the first thing. The second thing Jesus does is give us a warning. Judge not and you will not be judged. Now, we have to distinguish the kind of judgment that Jesus is talking about from other kinds of judgment because we as people make judgments all the time. We determine when we're going to get up, when we're going to go to bed, what we're going to wear, what we're going to eat that day. You know, 
These are all kinds of practical judgments. Our days are full of practical judgments. But what Jesus is talking about and what Jesus is forbidding is condemning our neighbor, pouncing on them for every fault, every wrongdoing, and being harsh with them, all right? And so the question that this, this, this imperative here, judge not and you will not be judged, condemn not and you will not be condemned, what's the question that I as a Christian should ask from this? It's the question, how do I want God to treat me when he judges me? Do I want God to be severe? Do I want God to be inflexible and merciless with me and my faults and my wrongdoings? Or do I want him to show compassion to me? I want him to be considerate of all of my weaknesses, my tendencies, my faults, you know, my those those weaknesses that I have for particular sins. I want them to be especially merciful to me in those areas where I have struggled the most. And so it's really remarkable to think that what Jesus is actually saying here is that you and I have some small measure of control over how God will judge us. We, in a sense, by the way that we treat other people, we are actually setting the bar for our own judgment by God. So be merciful to one another so that God will be merciful to you in the end. That's the second thing. Now, the third thing Jesus says is give and it will be given to you. Now, that's a little bit vague and ambiguous, isn't it? In other words, Jesus doesn't tell us to whom we should give. Jesus doesn't tell us what we should give. It's kind of open-ended in general, and I think that's on purpose, okay? Jesus is, is casting the net as widely as he can. He wants you to give to your neighbor in any way that you can, right? We can give financially, we can give materially, we can give of our time, we can give of our talents, um, all kinds of ways that we can serve our neighbor by putting to death our own selfishness and, and laying our lives down for the sake of other people. And Jesus's point, here is that your generosity will be met with divine generosity. It will be given to you, all right? St. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 that God loves a cheerful giver. He loves the cheerful giver, all right? And he responds to the cheerful giver by giving back an even greater abundance than we gave in the first place. And Jesus illustrates this with a very concrete um, image here of, of, of a person standing in the marketplace, okay? In the ancient world, you, you didn't have grocery bags at a grocery store. You went to the open market. And if you wanted to take home a batch of grain, for example, you would unfold your cloak over your belt and make, make a big pouch on your lap. And they would pour the grain literally right in there. And Jesus, l listen to how many, how many ways that he describes how abundant God will give to us. It will be like a person standing in the marketplace and they'll be pouring the grain into their lap, it will be a good measure. In other words, it'll be a fair amount, but it'll be more than that. It will be pressed down, shaken together, and even running over. It's the extraordinary generosity of God on our behalf that Jesus is talking about. That God always gives us back more than we deserve. God offers enormous returns on our investments in the kingdom of God. If you remember the parable of the sower, Jesus said that, that the return will be 30-fold, 60-fold, even 100-fold. So what is the lesson here in today's short reading from the Gospel of Luke? It is that we are to become like God, like God in showing mercy and like God in being generous. But at the same time, we're not to play God in the lives of other people by judging them and condemning them for their faults and their wrongdoings. I hope that this reflection was of some benefit to you today. I pray that God blesses you and your family and your day, and I look forward to seeing you here again next time. Thanks.